Hey, hello, welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. Measuring was something I used to hate at school. I even hated it more when I was an apprentice, but now I'm older, it seems to be one of those things you appreciate, like a good mellowed wine. Okay, so we're using the 300 TDI diesel engine overhaul manual. This is on the PDF. You can also get it as a paperback, as you can see just here. Basically, on a PDF, you have a search box which you can then type in a word and this will help you easier to find the data that you need. PDFs are quite wonderful things because as you put search words in, it will narrow down your options. So I put crankshaft service limit in here and then I can go over to the left hand side, click on it, I'm starting to get highlighted words. Well, this page here, I'll just um, make it larger and we can see we have the information that's relevant plus details on how to measure it. Okay, you can see that very clearly um, for the different journals, the main bearing and the big end journals, uh, different service limits. And also this will give you information on how the crankshaft can be ground to what undersize. Okay, so basically crankshaft in the engine data as well, it's all here, service limits as you can see are all highlighted. Don't worry about it now, we will get onto this later, but first of all I'm just trying to highlight this. We are going to have to do some very accurate measuring. Basically you'll need an outside micrometer set. Um, 0 0.01 millimeters is the minimum that you could possibly get away with and this is from 0 to 100 millimeters. As you can see there's a full set here and we measure by increments. Okay so basically this is 0 to 25 millimeters 0 0.01 accuracy. The 0 0.001 accuracy, which would be stated in this manual, we can actually still read with confidence. So 0 0.025 millimeters, we can measure 0 0.02 millimeters easily. And this is what we're going to do in this tutorial with a micrometer. The 0 0.025 will be two and a half of these measurements on the barrel here of the micrometer. If you understand how to use micrometers and you know how to measure engines, then I'd suggest you bugger off and carry on with your rebuild because you will not learn anything more here. However, if you don't know about micrometers, I will develop your skill with these as we go through these tutorials. Don't rush out and buy anything just yet. So we're going to continue with the cylinder head rocker shaft and basically you can strip it down keep all the parts in order but they should be cleaned first thing you want to inspect is the rocker shaft now this has shiny parts on it where the rockers have been working on the shaft and dirty or rusty parts where it's actually been standing and there's the parts that are not worn it's not very clear here at all which parts are worn However, what you can do, rule of thumb, is slip the rocker on there and see how much play you have on it. Try on an unworn piece and a worn piece. This is the sort of thing that people do when they pretend that they know what they're doing. Okay, if you're confident with stripping out your rocker shaft and leaving the parts and knowing how it goes back together, all well and good, otherwise keep it in one piece. Right, so one thing you should also inspect with your rocker shaft is your pedestals to see that they're not too badly worn, and they're not cracked or distorted in any way. Okay, that's um, aluminium on this material and if it's been loose at all, then it will possibly crack or wear. Right, the push rods we keep in order as usual and at the bottom of the push rods you have your cam follower. Now this brass piece is the one you pay most attention to to make sure it's not damaged um, or badly worn. The damage will actually show up because where the push rod is it will be cracked. This doesn't look too bad, it's not too badly worn. Okay, this is the cam follower roller and the area that it runs in. These generally don't cause too much of a problem and that's for the camshaft as well. Generally, they just slide up and down in this unit here, or the housing, okay. So as long as they're cracked and there is no evidence of um, bad wear, then they should be okay. If they are, then replace the center brass piece. When you're inspecting them, make sure they're all kept in order and you don't swap any of the parts around. 
Okay, so this generally, the working face is not chipped or worn, so that's okay. The camshaft, easily condemned if the case hardening is starting to break up on any of the lobes. This one happens to be for the vacuum pump, which has actually got a jet for lubrication, but it's caused this effect. Now all the other lobes you should inspect as well, they can have damage on them. Generally the camshafts don't really have too much of a problem, but unfortunately this one is a scrap. This can be rather tedious inspecting every part, but it makes a difference. And you're looking for wear or excessive wear in these cups on the push rods. Make sure they're straight and the push rod is not badly worn on this end either. Make sure you check all eight of these for straightness and damage. It's not rocket science to check for wear and some things are fairly evident. The face here has got um, wear on it but it's not excessive. This doesn't need to be refaced as it's not indentated. So we could possibly use this rocker again without any issues. Any wearing faces, make sure they're not badly grooved or worn in, which they shouldn't be. And I'd recommend changing the bush on these rockers, especially on a high mileage engine. We can't really measure them. Okay, so back to the rocker shaft. I'm gonna get a little bit more accurate here because you can see a wear on here and if you run your thumb finger you can feel that there is just a very slight ridge there is a tolerance of how much wear you can have in the rocker shaft and it is quite a lot looking at here it says compare measurements obtained by calculating difference between diameters if wear at the rocker shaft location exceeds 0.025 a millimeter a new rocker shaft must be fitted Okay, so let's have a look at this and measure it to see if it actually is a worn beyond tolerances. So with a micrometer, first of all, we measure an unworn area. It recommends the area where the pedestals are. However, the area where it has nothing's been wearing on, I'm still going to measure it. So if we have a look at the increments here, we'll see it's 15, 16, 17, 18 millimetres. And then on the barrel, that's 0.4567, so that's 18.47 millimetres. Right, so measure the warm part of the rocker shaft with the micrometer accurately. Okay, I'll find the most warm part here and set the micrometer. And then I'll bring it back to show you. So looking at the measurement here, what we have is 15, 16, 17, 18.4. 4567 so it's 18.7 so there isn't anything really that's worn on this i'd recommend that you with your micrometer is to measure all the worn parts of the rocker shaft to decide which is the worst part that's worn if it exceeds 0.025 then scrap the rocker shaft to get constant measurements or accurate measurements, you have to have your micrometer on square and in the center of a cylindrical object. And you'll see that the reading is just about the same as I had on the other parts of the rocker shaft. Okay, so in the uh, description below, there's a link you can click on to, and that will bring you to LandRoverWeb.com. And this is PDF Land Rover manuals. You can get PDFs download them of certain manuals now we'll go and find the 300 tdi overhaul manual for land rover and click on it and wait a while and it will download or you can open it first and then download it this is the 300 tdi uh, diesel manual the overhaul manual so we can have a little bit of interaction here and uh, find a certain detail what i'm looking for which is the valve stem diameter of the inlet and exhaust valves Right, now we'll test a measurement here. This is a brand new valve that I've had for a little while that I bought cheaply. Okay, now I've measured it, and you'll agree that I measure it in certain places. It's five, six, seven, eight point four five millimeters. Is this correct?